welcome to the lecture on introduction to hydrology the learning objectives are to understand the concept of hydrology to study the hydrologic cycle to demonstrate the component parts of hydrologic cycle and last objective is to learn the applications of hydrology coming to definition of hydrology hydrology may be defined as the science which deals with depletion and replenishment of water it deals with surface as well as ground water movement of water distribution of water and management of water so the study of hydrology is dealing with surface water as well as ground water surface water means the water which is existing on the surface of earth excluding sea water and ground water is nothing but it is a subsurface water hydrology is derived from greek word hydro and logos hydro meaning water and logos meaning science so this hydrology is the science of water now coming to hydrologic cycle the hydrologic cycle is also called as water cycle normally it begins with the operation of water from the sea and water bodies the resulting vapors are transported by moving air these vapors move to higher altitude higher and higher and higher altitude at higher altitude these vapors get condensed to form clouds small clouds get formed with the help of these small clouds again bigger clouds are get formed these clouds collides burst and melts and in turn precipitation occurs after the occurrence of precipitation some of the part get intercepted some of the part of water it infiltrates into the ground and excess water it moves on the surface of ground in the form of surface runoff or simply you can say a runoff and with the help of this runoff again there will be development of water bodies and from these water bodies again there will be evaporation and these water cycle will get repeated from this schematic diagram really one can understand the various phases of hydrology cycle in the chronological order how this cycle occurs now there are various phases of this hydrologic cycle so already we have discussed it begins from evaporation and then transpiration condensation precipitation interception depression storage infiltration and last is runoff we'll discuss one by one so where first phase is evaporation so it is the process of returning moisture from water bodies to the atmosphere next is transpiration it is the process in which plants return moisture to the air so with the help of leaves or foliage transpiration process will occur next is condensation it is the process in which water vapors at higher altitude gets converted into a water droplets or you can say liquid form after this there will be precipitation so this precipitation is nothing but any form of water that reaches the surface of earth that is a precipitation next comes to be interception so whenever precipitation occur all the part of precipitation does not reach to the earth surface some of the part of precipitation it retains on the foliage or leaves of the trees and it is called as interception now next is depression storage the part of precipitation which requires to fill up gullies on the earth surface is called as depression storage next is infiltration the entry of water into the soil generally by downward flow it is called as infiltration it is also called as downward movement of water into the crust of earth and last is runoff after fulfilling all the abstraction the excess water which flows on the surface of land is called as runoff now coming to applications of hydrology so this study of hydrology it is helpful 
to know the maximum probable flood and its frequency so determination of this maximum probable flood and its frequency is utmost important for design of various types of hydraulic structure if you take the example of bridges while designing or uh, making the constant regarding the height of the bridge one should know the maximum flood which has occurred and the frequency of occurrence of such type of flood normally what happens if it is underestimated in that case the bridges will go under water and if it is overestimated in that case it will be uneconomical the study of hydrology is useful to determine water yield from the basin so whatever amount that can be contributed from a particular basin that can be determined with the help of study of hydrology to know the required reservoir capacity one can find out the reservoir capacity with the help of this hydrology it is helpful to study the maximum intensity of storm to study the duration of the storm as well as already we have discussed frequency of storm also and in turn this is useful for designing of various hydraulic structures the hydrology is also important to study environmental impact of hydro hydraulic structures so whenever it is proposed to construct any hydraulic structures the natural things will get disturbed so environment impact analysis is a must and it is possible with the study of this hydrology also lastly it is useful for designing of sewers and urban drainage system so during every rainy season we used to hear that the particular area the particular city it goes under water it gets flooded so if design system is a sewer system is properly designed if it is adequate so definitely whatever rain water will be there storm water will be there, it will get discharge off so designing of the sewers and urban drainage system it is of very very important and it is possible with the help of hydrology thank you